Okay, so here's the plan. She takes her pointer and points it to an area on the holographic map. We need to get to this room, and we have a lot of obstacles to get past. They're expecting us this time. Lucia, how do we start? We're going to go into the sewers and come up into the basement. Then we'll deal with whatever guards are in the basement. Once you plug one of the dongles I gave you into the security system, I should be able to shut off all the cameras. And once the cameras are off, the teleporters, so me and Karen, I guess, um, we will teleport upstairs and cause some distractions to split up the guards. And once the guards are scattered, we'll head up to the first floor and take out whoever's left. And then once everyone's out of the way, we can break into the secret area and hopefully that'll be where we need to be. Hopefully. All right, team. Sounds like a plan. Everybody in? Karen puts her hand in the center. Oh, yeah. 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 I put my hand in. Yeah. Valerie Mm -hmm. puts her hand in. Okay, everybody. On three. One. Two. Wait, what are we saying on three? I just want to to make sure. What are we saying? Like rhythmics or heist? I'm not entirely sure what we're saying on three. Is it okay if I say rhythmics? Yeah. 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 You're basically an unofficial member, even if you are a double agent. Okay, now I have a bunch of ethical quandaries to deal with. Or, Isn't it yeah. like even now? And like wasn't Diana a double happy. agent and now you're a double agent? So it's like the debt's paid, it's fine. Rhythmics heist! And she raises her hand up. Rhythmics heist! Rhythmics heist. I think after that, Valerie turns to Cass and says, um, it's fine, K- Karen isn't part of the actual band but she's our friend so and so are you it's it's fine rhythmic is a state of mind you're officially a mixer oh that's good and karen writes mixer on her hand Um, in the interests of time, and because no one likes sewer levels, um, we're not going to spend too much time in the sewers. Uh, we've determined prior to this session that it would be too impractical to go in the front doors because there's going to be far too much security to do the same thing you did last time. It's also impractical to go in from above, considering how high the building is and how few other buildings are around to conceal you, and just there's a lot of logistical problems going in from above. So the best way you figured to go into the building is to come up from underneath through the sewer system. And Karen was able to do a little bit of scouting around with her powers this week to figure out the best way into the building from that area. So you have basically like a grate that you know you can find once you're in there. The problem will be getting rid of any basement guards once you are in there. How long after the sleepover do you think this is? Like, Are you going on a weeknight again, or are you waiting for the weekend? Because that's probably (laughs) logistically more sound. I feel like we should wait for the weekend. Yeah, that's probably better. Yeah. Also, probably Queen Bee will ask about the whole hair thing. Oh, to Karen, yes. Like, after we do the planning and people are starting to get set for the sleepover, Queen Bee just uh, sidles up to Karen and says, So, you have a second? Uh, Oh, sure, what's up? And she takes Queen Bee out into one of the other rooms, maybe the kitchen. I think I messed up. Oh? I, like, uh, I, when we went to camp, I, I stayed Queen Bee the whole time. And I did wonder about that, if I just didn't see you transform back, or if you'd really... Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I didn't feel safe, so, uh, but... Oh. Now, if, when I turn back, my, my hair was different, it was, oh. and I, I... Have you ever seen anything like that? Um, well, yeah, that's basically what happened to Anne, isn't it? And yeah, I've I've definitely seen it happen a couple of times. Um, I think it's about a week is about when you get stuck for good, but definitely leading up to then. Um, nobody knows quite how it works, but like your body definitely the longer it stays transformed, the more it wants to stay transformed is as much as anyone can figure okay so so i should stay transformed less 
Yeah. I think the more you stay untransformed, the more you'll revert back to how you were before. Because people have come back from that, I think. Not from permanently getting stuck, but like from the in-between stage. So I think if you wait long enough, the change might revert. But I know how much you like being Queen Bee, too, so... Well, maybe I can make some practice this week. Mm. And uh, uh, I hate to ask, but can you, like, wake me up before the others so I can change back? Uh, I would yeah, like, before no, going to bed, I'll, I'll, I'll be transformed just in case and... Yeah, definitely. Like, if you need, like, some extra space, like, I, I, I don't have any energy oh. to create a whole nother room right now. No, but, no, no, like, no, I'll just pull the sleeping bag over my head. It's going to be fine. Don't worry. Sure, sure. Yeah. And the uh, Queen Bee pulls in time for a quick hug. Aw. <laughs> yeah, Karen definitely gives her a big hug. And you, you swear that you feel, like, maybe, like, a little comforting tendril on your shoulder, too, maybe. But the feeling is gone after a second. Okay. <laughs> So you make it through the rest of your school week. You have a, finally we can get through a relatively normal school week without much incident, <laughs> and that might even be October at this point. Oh, I should check my calendar. That might be a momentous occasion. Ooh. Ooh. Also, I know Manova and I thrive on conditions, but like, can we clear any of them? Yes, if it's been but, a week, you can clear all your conditions before ooh, going into this. Thank goodness. Okay, because I was already at three. Oh, yeah, the water park trip was on Monday the 28th, so if you waited till Saturday, it is officially October the 3rd! We Ooh. made it out of September, everybody! Yeah. 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 Yay! <laughs> Alright, so, it is Saturday night, late at night, at heist time here. Y'all have made your way into the sewer systems from a further away vantage point that won't get you detected. You've managed to plot out exactly how far you need to travel through the sewers to get under the Crimson Signal building, and you've made your way underneath the grate where you know you'll need to come up. What are you doing? Also, what is everyone wearing? Um, we've all transformed, and Lucia's in, like, black streetwear again. Oh, okay. All right. So, Lucia, what labels did you shift when you transformed into that outfit? Ooh, great question. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, I want to move danger up, that's for sure. And I'll move freak down, because I'm at three. I can afford to go look down and freak. All right. Yeah, that's like balance. Because you know you need to be prepared to be ready for a fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. And who wants to describe their costume and label changes next? I'll go. Jaden's also transformed. Everything's black. It's black jeans, black shoes, a black hoodie. And I think the hoodie is a quintessential harmony and phantasm hoodie. He's got a hood up over his head as well. And I think he also has a Guy Fawkes mask. Um, oh. <laughs> it's a black Guy Fawkes, obviously. Nice. And he's got that ready to put on when they get into the facility. And I'm going to increase superior and lower mundane. I think right now he's not, especially with a freaking Guy Fawkes mask, mask he's not exactly trying yeah. to be normal, uh, mm -hmm. but he's trying to break into another the facility again. He's going to want to have his wits about him. So I think it's just, mm -hmm. the situation needs to be pretty high up. For sure. And Cass, Cass has an interesting position for this heist, um, because as much as Karen did think that someone needed to stay behind in case something went wrong last time, maybe she's not the best person to do that. They do have one person on the team who has more than enough know-how to be their eye-in-the-sky, oracle-type person in the chair. So, Cass, tell us how this is looking for you for this mission. Sure. Quick question. Is Karen's pocket dimension basement stable when she's not there? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Cool. Once it's formed, it's like reality is set. It's there. Gotcha. So, yeah, I think we see Polly float up behind the other people and then kind of zoom into Polly and come through the other side where there's a computer screen and Cass is set up in Karen's basement with her laptop and a desktop and a bunch of computer screens set up so that she can be the gal in the chair for the team. And she's probably like sitting on her sleeping bag in pajamas because <laughs> she's <laughs> sleeping over that night, obviously. Of course. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think everybody's like sleepover stuff is there around you as well for when people get back later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Assuming they do, which fingers crossed. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. This is all fine. I have utmost confidence in you all. And for sure, like you have Polly there for right now, but you're also, if you want to, able to project like a full form either hard light or hologram construct of yourself if you want to be physically present in the scene as well. Yeah, Polly can do a lot. They're very impressive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what does Karen look like? Action mode Karen. Hmm. Well, obviously, she's traded the beige cargo shorts for some black cargo pants. So she still has lots of pockets to carry things with if need be. She can carry, like, some of Cass's gadgets with them, maybe. (laughs) And then I think she probably would have like a black undershirt with an open front, like black, not a Hawaiian shirt, but like a long sleeve open front black shirt over the top. And then her hair would probably be up in like a cute like braid bun, like French braid style that the friend helped make for her. Oh. And uh, still sandals. <laughs> Icon. Of course. Perfect. Not not flip flops, obviously, those would make noise, but yeah, something that yeah. attaches more securely to the feet. I know we're finding out a lot about Karen, but I think there's a lot of dedication shown to the look to wear sandals into a sewer. <laughs> yep. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, maybe she boy. doesn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, maybe while they're walking through the sewers, uh, she like morphs them into rubber boots and changes <laughs> them back once they get out of the water. <laughs> okay. That checks out. <laughs> I've got a question, Erin. Yeah. Could I have the same backpack for the stuff I brought the last time? Um, I, I was wondering about that, yeah. and I think yes. yes. Yes, you can. Okay. I know I definitely lost the remote control race car, because uh, that was, I used that to try to be a distraction, and that didn't work out, so I just kind of zoomed off somewhere. But I think I kept everything else. Yeah. Valerie's also going to transform. I don't remember exactly how I described her outfit before, but I'm picturing very similar to her regular stage costume, but instead of dress, she's wearing like baggy pants that she can move around in and her hair is actually tied up with the bow and one of her purple ribbons is covering most of her face like a scarf. Ooh, very cool. (laughs) Very Shatari Shinomori hero look. Yeah, and I'm going to be shifting superior down just because that's high already and danger up all right who wants to go next i'll go so i'm gonna be lowering savior and raising danger and uh, queen b is showing up an updated version of the hornet costume which is really just uh, treacherous tanya from mortal kombat (laughs) with a domino mask oh yeah oh cool very martial Mm-hmm. Very fight. Much punch. Yes. We're in it for action. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of punch, how about Angie? Um, this time Angie's not wearing a cat suit. She's dressed practically after she transforms, so probably tight pants with boots. Um, and then just like a long sleeve nondescript shirt, and then she has her hair all up in a black beanie well that's a lot of hair in that beanie yeah (laughs) somehow it looks like she doesn't have any hair in there but uh yeah oh yeah yeah because you know magic or whatever (laughs) (laughs) the beanie itself is a pocket dimension it's eye space (laughs) bigger on the inside love it yeah so where i'm struggling is that i'm pretty happy with where all the labels are now so now i'm like oh but wait Uh oh (laughs) Well, here's the thing you could do. Um, I don't think we've used this before, uh, but you could if you want to, is the transformation surge move, which would technically keep your labels where you are if you're willing to keep take a condition for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you want a condition. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because you do have one stat that's at minus two right now. So that's it at its maximum on that end. That would be an easy way to get the angry condition that helps you a lot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so you could say you're trying to lower your mundane lower than minus two, and that would trigger that. All right, yeah, that's what I try to do. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I do that. Yeah. (laughs) So to review for the listeners, what we're trying to get is transformation surge, which is a rarely used move, but a very useful one. 
So when you shift labels during your transformation sequence and attempt to push a label past an extreme, either lower than minus two or higher than plus three, mark a condition and leave your labels unchanged as normal, you feel something unstable about your transformation, but also something energizing. Choose one of the following effects. And then you have a list of possible effects that you can choose to benefit yourself or the team. I think I'm going to fire up my allies with passion and gusto and add a team to the pool. All right. Team speech, team speech, team speech. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all gathered around under the grate. We're about to go up. And Angie basically says, okay. So we're up against a totally evil corporation who is not only sucking the energy out of our idol friends, they're kidnapping others and doing who knows what to them. This guy, Mr. Cervantes, has gotten away with some heinous things before. We're talking like worse than embezzlement here, and he's always avoided punishment. So last time was a warning, and even though we might have lost, we still scared them. So there's more of them this time but we're also stronger than last time and closer than last time and even more prepared than last time. So tonight, we punch them in the face. I don't know how to end it. And she just puts her hand in the middle awkwardly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you did a punch great job. Punch them in the face. And she puts her hand in as well. Does, does Polly join in in the middle? <laughs> yeah, Polly's gonna like swirl and turn into a hand to join the <laughs> hands in. Aww. Aww. All right. Go rhythmic. 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 Heist? We, we should really discuss what we're gonna say first. I feel like that would help a lot. Maybe we'll figure that out after we've done this. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. And then. Angie um, has marked angry, of course. <laughs> yes. And I've added another team to the pool. Y'all have three. Yes. Okay. okay. Plus a couple of hold that Angie could use to help Valerie if need be. Yeah. Valerie specifically. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's fine. Oh, uh, um, right from the get go, can I roll for burn? Say so if anything yeah. goes wrong, it goes wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> In the sewers. Um, okay. Whew. Fingers crossed. Oh, okay. That's okay. Perfect. Yeah, that was an eight. And I'm gonna mark insecure. I think he's still a bit nervous about this whole thing. Understandable. You get your three burn and you are locked and loaded and ready to go. So how are you opening this grate and are you checking for security as you do so? I mean, I think it goes without saying that Lucia would try to keep the group as invisible as long as she possibly can. Mm-hmm. So that will probably help us as we sneak past the gate. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think you could use your illusion powers to both shield the group and maybe project an illusion up above that makes it look like the grate is still down if you mm -hmm. want to. Yeah, definitely. The only complication would be like the grate's still going to make a lot of noise when you move it. So you got to be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Vivi could try to move the grate with her telekinesis, but I don't know if that would be quieter. It might be. <laughs> You wouldn't be, like, pushing and shoving on it. You'd be, like, lifting it in a controlled manner. Mm -hmm. I think I could help with that. Sound needs air, and if I could just make, um, isolate or stop the air around the grate from moving, it should be silent. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I think this kind of feels like it's going to be, like, an all three of you roll and unleash your powers, because this is a multi-step thing that everyone's participating in. <laughs> Lucia's keeping the group hidden as they move up through the grate, Valerie is lifting the grate so that they don't have to worry about moving it noisily. And Jaden is using air to like stop any other sound from traveling. All right. So every all three of you, please roll. Unleash your powers. Uh, oh, wait, okay. I'm nervous. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> One of those oh. isn't good. Hmm. This works pretty. I, I'm 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 interested to see how this goes because Drac got a twelve, Dana got a ten, and uh, Liv got a six. <laughs> do you want to spend a team right up front, or do you want to let that ride? <sighs> Did we actually keep an eye out to see if there are actually any guards nearby? My only concern is like I feel like, and Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. 
this is the invisibility that will stick with us through the heist. Am I wrong? Mm. Uh, only as long as you stay together, because it's more like an invisibility bubble. Mm, yeah. yeah. But like whoever's staying with Lucia would be. Yes, as yeah. long as Lucia can keep the bubble up. And you can regenerate the bubble if it doesn't work properly. Wait, I, I wait, hold on. I shouldn't have made you roll that because I told you before we started this that I wasn't going to make you roll for your invisibility to at least at the start. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ooh, okay, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, listeners, this isn't just me being lenient to the players, at least on the spot. It's not because I did legitimately before the session tell Liv <laughs> I wasn't going to make them roll for their invisibility because Lucia did it so well last time that she knows what she's doing with it. It's so, like I'm an expert or something. <laughs> yeah, like when you're just going in, I think it's fine. It's only as you get further into this situation and the stress starts mounting that I'll, I'll make you roll for it. At the beginning, whatever, you can do it. We have the Discord messages. <laughs> we yes. have the receipts. Yes. Yes. We'll post them we for the patrons. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe we won't. <laughs> Just take our word for it. Why would I, the delinquent, ever lie to you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why would I, the GM, collaborate for a specific outcome that I want? <laughs> <laughs> so we're invisible. Right. Yes, you are invisible, and both of the other two rolled perfectly, so this is going to go flawlessly. Okay, I think we're good sound-wise. I've kept everything stationary, so you shouldn't make too much noise when we move the grate. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. And Vivi touches the grate lightly, and it glows purple and lifts straight up out of the, you know, the indentation where it's sitting and slowly moves to the side and sets down very gently. Yeah, it just sounds dead silent. Very nice. I think Karen's got one of those little wormhole spheres that you can monitor up above as you're doing this, so you knew there was no guard passing by that direct area as you were doing it. Mm -hmm. And then Vivi also makes a set of stairs for everyone to climb up easily. Perfect. Okay. I use the stairs and I climb up. So now everybody is in the hallway of this basement. You are cloaked by the invisibility shield. You probably will have to drop the air shield as you move through the hallway, unless you keep it going, I guess. <laughs> Although you rolled so well, I kind of want to let you do that, even. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, I'm just going to keep it. Yeah, I'll let you keep that rolling for a little while. <laughs> I'll keep it going around our feet so that our feet don't make any noise, because we still want to be able to like whisper and talk to each other. Um, yeah, <laughs> especially since sound is what got you caught last time. Yeah, Jaden would be very careful about sound this time around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he'll just keep the air around our feet as stationary as possible so that sound waves can't travel through them. Perfect. So you all make your way towards the camera room. I think you probably see a guard or two pass by as you make your way. Then you flatten against the wall <laughs> so that they don't see you as they pass by. And yeah, you make your way to the camera room. All right. And Angie rolls her shoulders a little bit and cracks her knuckles and I would assume this would probably be Angie and Vivi. Yeah. So I peek through the window and just see, is there no, I guess there's no guards in front of the door here? Yeah, not in front of the door. There are two sitting in chairs in front of the camera monitor, so there's one more in there than there was last time. Okay, that makes sense. I have a very important question. Is one of the guards the same guard that Vivi almost killed last time? Unfortunately, yes. Um, he looks very tired. <laughs> fair. They've probably had him working extended hours. I'm sure he got a talking to. Mm -hmm. But at least he's got a friend now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't look like the door is locked in any way. Angie wasn't here last time, so I don't think she'd know. Uh, I don't think so. As long as there's someone in there, I don't think there would be. Alright, so she kind of mouths to Vivi on three, and then with her fingers just does one, two, three and then Angie opens the door for them to go in and she's just gonna go and knock them out sure so are you just punching then yes all right that's full hit perfect all right I'm also going to mark my doom track to use my ribbon power again to cover the other guard's face just long enough to knock him out okay uh... okay I need to ask is it against the same guard as the one you ran into last time as well? Yeah, I think as this happens, she runs over and goes, Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh no. <laughs> Aww. 
And oh, oh no. no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Boy, it seems like we might need two team points. Um Yeah, no actually, well, here's what I'll give you. I'm not going to put the guard's life in danger this time because okay. I think Vivi would be careful enough to not do that this yeah. time. But I think you don't do it quick enough. They're on high alert, so before you're able to fully knock him out, he is going to slam a hand down on an alarm button and an al- alarm starts going off. Oh. Yikes. Do we all hear that? Oh yeah, because it's a five, so uh, Angie we would only be able to bring it up by one. Yeah. Well, that's what could happen. If you're willing to burn two team on this, we could avoid it. But you only have three team. Uh, well, for Vivi, I have one. Oh, right. You have your thing. Yeah. I actually have two specifically for Vivi. So I could get Vivi to seven. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to use two at once, though. Um, I wouldn't say you could use two, but you could use one of Angie's hold and somebody else could use team. I can use team. Sure. Sounds good. So that would bring it up to a seven. All right. Describe how you're helping as Vivi is struggling to get this man under control with her ribbon. I think Angie would have punched her guy out right away. So I think she'd stand in front of the panic button so that he couldn't hit it. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And Queen Bee, how are you helping? Or Hornet, rather. How are you helping? <laughs> Thank you. Queen Bee leaps into the room and just uh, before the guard can slam their hand on the button, she grabs his fist and turns it into a... Uh, it, there's a samba move called the sombrero. It's like uh, you grab uh, the opposite hand of the other one and you do like a spin and it ends with one person hugging the other from the back. But in this case, it ends in an arm lock. Nice. You're able to hold him long enough for Vivi to like do what she was trying to do the first time and like just knock him out, but not threaten his life. Mm-hmm. That's definitely a thing that you can do in comic books. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> you do still need some kind of downside because it's only seven though, so I think I'm gonna ask you to mark a condition for it. Yeah. It yeah, it's I either uh I can mark a condition or it can be unstable or temporary. In this case I'm definitely Marking condition, I'm marking guilty. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I strongly recommend guilty in this scene. <laughs> okay, so you were able to successfully take out both camera guards before any alarms were sounded. Thank goodness. NG, I think, is just tying them up and wrapping something around their mouth so they don't cause problems later. Oh, wait, I have something for this. And Jane's going to pull out a roll of tape out of his backpack and going to throw it over to Angie. Here you go. Yeah, and Angie's going to catch it in the air and be like, nice, and then use the tape. <laughs> yeah, like a duct tape or something like that. Exactly. Something that they, good. you know, that's not going to hurt them when they pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> and Karen waves Polly into the room with her. All right. I, uh, where did you say you needed the dongle again for this? Polly kind of floats in and goes, scanning, and is going to do like the pixel cloud swirl thing and then form a line that sweeps across the room until it reaches the port and then it swirls into a circle and then forms into an arrow pointing where the dongle needs to be plugged in. Gotcha. She bends down to plug the dongle in and uh, what happens when she does that? That basically just lets Cass interface with the system from back in the pocket dimension. So Cass is going to hack into the computers and shut down the cameras. All right. Do you want to assess before you do this or do you want to just go straight for it? Yeah, sure. I'll assess. Sure. better. Hey, nice. Hell yeah. Very nice. So that's a 12. Yeah, so whenever you assess the situation and your field of study is directly relevant, you may ask a single follow-up question when on an assess. So you get to ask the regular assess questions plus one extra, basically. Mm-hmm. Let's start with what here is the biggest threat. So I think you definitely find the systems that are responsible for setting off alarms and keeping cameras active, so... That's going to be the biggest threats to the rest of your plan hitting off. So you find those in the system and you're able to disable those systems. All right. Um, Who here is most vulnerable to me? Mm. I think uh, as you're looking through the systems, you're able to access some of the other security systems and you see some of the lock systems and you get a sense of exactly what kind of locks you'll need to get past when you get to the secret area. So you'll have more time to prepare to take those on when you get there cool and then for my special playbook question which 
if I remember correctly, doesn't have to be from the list. What haven't we accounted for yet? Hmm. Hmm. Good question. Hmm. Yeah. Because your plan is actually pretty good. I'm trying to think. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think probably just like you haven't accounted for it because you can't because you don't know what's in there is you really don't know what's on the other side of that secret room door. So once the plan gets there, you're flying without a parachute, basically. Mm. Okay. Sorry if that's not a very satisfying answer, but you're that speaks to the good plan that you have. No, I think that makes sense. So yeah, Cass relays the information over the comms like, okay, cameras are down. There's really no information about what's behind that door, so I can't prepare you for that any more than we already are. But it looks like everything else is within our expectations. Great. Okay, so I think that's me and Karen up next, right? Yeah. You were talking to me about an idea that you had, Queen Bee. Um, I think what we can do to get them to split up into more places is it might help if we go to different floors. Like, Elementum, maybe you can go to that floor that you've been to before, and then B and I can maybe go up to one of the higher floors. Maybe the executive floor? I was thinking the same. Yeah, and we can get distractions going in multiple places. How does that sound? Are you okay being by yourself? Because I can come with you too if, you, if you're not comfortable with it. No, I can do this. Okay. Don't be afraid to come back down here, regroup with the others if things go sideways. Okay. All right. And uh, Karen reaches out to take uh, Queen Bee's hand. Before she takes uh, Karen's hand, Queen B does like the better handshake with uh, Angie. Yes. And pulls her a bit closer and whispers, I'm not gonna fuck it up. Wasn't worried for a second. And uh, I'm engaging game face. All right. You took that move too. Yeah. <laughs> it's my new Janus move and it allows me to mark a condition when pledging to save someone or take down an enemy, mark one condition and take plus one ongoing to all roll in the attempt. At the end of every scene, if you have made progress, mark another condition. Or if you haven't made progress, yeah. Let's go. All right. I like that you've marked angry too, to mirror Angie as well. But it's more like a fired up type of anger, I feel like. It is, like it's a focused anger. All right. Karen takes your hand, takes a breath, and it, much like the time that she moved you through time and space or rather the friend moved you through time and space before she and the friend both take a moment and then in the eyes of the others you both pop out um for Jaden, he kind of like shakes his hands bounces up and down his feet a bit and then closes his eyes and very sudden it's just like a pop and he just kind of bursts into a flurry of bubbles and disappears (laughs) and reappears in the research and development section as these bubbles appear on nowhere and congeal into the shape of him and then he appears there. Oh, I like that a lot. I don't know if you did that before, but I still like it if you did. (laughs) I know, every time you teleport, I use a different element to describe it. Last time it was fire. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Where in the R&D do you think you are? Like, just in the midst of all the, like, computer area where you were with Cass the first time you went? Or, like... Um... I'd say, like, maybe under a table, if I can appear there. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's more than fair. Yeah. Yeah, which is probably for the best, because you definitely hear the sounds of someone walking around on that floor. Uh, They're not near to you. It seems like they're just doing their rounds in the area, but they are there. Okay. He's going to rock through his bag and pull out several water bottles, Um, just plastic water bottles, (laughs) (laughs) and... I want to try and like roll them under different computers I can just get them to. Yeah, yeah. Well, with your water powers, definitely you can do that. Yeah. Do we have any way of communicating right now? I have to realize that I don't know if we do. Um. Oh, I think Cass probably would have provided people with like earpiece communicators or something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't think she would have let them go in without something like that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to be like, okay, um... When should I start a distraction, or should I just go whenever? Um, maybe to give, give us a sec to figure out what we're doing up here first, you hear from Karen as she and B are up on the executive floor. Okay, go ahead. We made it up here okay. Uh, there doesn't seem to be whatever magic blocking field is in those other areas, so let's see. Give us a sec to look around first. Will do. All right. 
Queen Bee and Karen up on the 14th floor. You are in a very fancy looking uh, hallway. You aren't, um, actually, probably, if, you, if they're taking the extra effort to read the area, uh, taking the extra energy from Karen to do that anyway, um, they might as well take you straight past the locked door into the Mr. Cervantes' office if you want to go in there. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> so yeah, you are in uh, Mr. Cervantes' office. It is surprisingly sparse in here. Like, it is, like, very nicely done up. Like, nice paintings on the wall. The walls are obviously a deep red. Very nice mahogany desk. But where you would expect to find, like, actual work computer or, like, files or anything like that, you don't really see anything. You see, like, maybe a couple of monitors, but they're not connected to a computer. So you would imagine that if Mr. Cervantes does do any computer work in here, he probably takes his tower or laptop home with him. Okay. Can I do a quick assess to see if there's anything I'm missing? Absolutely. Actually, while you're doing that, Karen's probably going to sit down on the floor like, oh, because going to a space she doesn't know takes it out of her. Uh, I'm going to add my bonus for game phase. Okay. And I still fail. Uh Uh-oh. Oh. Hmm. (laughs) Unfortunately, as you look around, there might not be much visible here, but there sure are security lasers that you can't see. (laughs) Oh, wonderful. Yep. So as you move around through the room, your foot must accidentally trip some type of hidden security laser because you do start hearing an alarm go off as you move through the room. Well, we were supposed to cause a distraction and we did. Um, guys, is that a distraction? Is that my signal to go? Oh, yeah. (laughs) You can, yeah, before you even, like, get an answer, you can probably take that as the cue. (laughs) In that case, I want to use my electrical powers to get all of the computers to just explode. Ooh, okay. Well, I, well, that's a separate thing from the water bottles. I guess because the water bottles... Those are extra things. I've got, that's a thing I have going on in my head. I've got that planned, don't worry. (laughs) Yeah, to even things out, I think because the water bottle thing is... You've had a moment to plan that, and it's a power that you're comfortable with. I would give you a plus one to rolling that unleash, but if you're going to unleash with your electrical powers, you're going to roll with a minus one, or you take a voluntary side effect. Okay. Um, you know what? Yeah, I'll go with water bottles then. Um, <laughs> I'll go with water bottles. <laughs> and what I want to do with those is just rapidly expand the water and basically just make huge ice charged burst out of the water bottles under these computers and one destroy the computers and also just make a bunch of noise slamming into the walls and stuff like that and just in case it doesn't work i also would like to use one of my last burn um my passive move worship which is you put out a tremendous display of your might spend one burn to all audience into silence respect or attention which is what i'm trying to get i'm trying to get everyone's attention um, when you unleash your powers Oh, okay. I think you can you can do that once you have like some actual guards in the area, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll save that then. Well, you will shortly because we established this one nearby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um oh, fingers crossed, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, it's <a> 12. <laughs> yes. Nice. Everything's coming up draconics. <laughs> <laughs> so the 12 a fill here. Yes. Okay. So you do exactly as you described. <laughs> yeah. He's still like uh, under the table, kind of hiding as best he can. But you just see him like pointing fingers at each bottle. And each time he does, the bottle like explodes and just huge shards of ice are formed as the water freezes in place and slams into the walls, shatters computer screens and monitors. Just trying to make as much noise as he can while he's doing that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And yeah, now definitely you have alarms going off on this floor. The guard has spotted you. There's lots of... Did you, you're causing a distraction, definitely. <laughs> and you're doing it in a very cool way. <laughs> Especially since you're standing there in like your all black outfit and your black guy fox mask, standing oh, in the yeah. middle of all this water and ice chaos, like the elemental mastermind that you are. <laughs> You hear the guard shouting into her walkie-talkie like, we got eyes on a on a bogey here, or whatever guards say, as she calls for backup to join her upstairs. Uh, and she's probably going to start chasing you. I'm going to just try and keep running and keep avoiding them on the same floor, but try and keep avoiding them until more guards show up. I want to try and just keep going as long as I can until I can get as many guards on me as possible. Alrighty. So we'll let you do that for a bit. Um, I think we'll have to go back up to Karen and Queen Bee and see if they succeed in doing somewhat the same thing. 
B, how are you handling this? <laughs> you can definitely hear outside in the hallway there are some people starting to come up the stairs and into that hallway. Okay, that's great. Queen B grabs some sort of fancy paperweight and smashes the window with it. All right. <laughs> then uh, she's going to turn towards Karen. Okay. Now, anything goes wrong, we meet five floors down. Five? Okay. And she's taking a second to, like, gather her wits and energy together. Like, okay, floor nine. Okay. Don't worry. You don't need to take me. I can run down. Okay, that would be good. Uh, the, the less energy I have to spend on that, the better. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> Bimbi steadies herself, cracks her neck. She can hear the people coming in the corridor. Are you going to let them see you before you leave, or are you going to try and get out before they see you? Oh no, she's going to walk in the corridor. Oh, into the corridor. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going out the window for some reason. No, no, that's to escape afterwards. Oh, I got you. I got you, got you. She opened the window also for the bees to get in. Okay. Can be squares of shoulders. Okay, Alan. Time to prove you're not a loser, after all. And she walks out. All right. Do you have guards approaching you now? Some of them are starting to pop up their anti-power shields, but one or two of them are drawing pistols, and they're going to start shooting at you. So I'm going to have to have you directly engage a threat if that's what you're doing. Can I try and intimidate them first? Ooh, sh- uh, sure. What would be the best move for that? Probably a provoke. I think, yeah, I think it's a provoke. Yeah. What kind of intimidation are you doing? I'm just gonna swag her in and, uh, hello boys. So can you tell me how much of your physical therapy will Crimson Signal pay for? Because if it's not at least six months, you really should just sit this one out. Ah! Oh yeah, that's definitely a provoke someone. <laughs> definitely roll for this. <laughs> As you do this while guards are starting to shoot at you. Please, 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 please. Hmm. That's a seven. That's a respectable seven. <laughs> Yeah, I think they definitely err. I think you're able to avoid their shots, but they're still coming at you. And I think your critical opportunity that you get from them erring is that as they're rushing at you, you can probably get in some kind of good hit or whatever it is that you're trying to do after this. Okay. Queen B is going to start running at them full tilt on the wall and engage, I guess. Yeah, and you'll get a plus one from your opportunity. Plus one from opportunity, plus one from... Game phase means plus two. Ooh. Ooh. Kapow! That's a 15. Okay. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Yeah, so you get, uh, what is it, two? Yeah, you get two from directly engage a threat. Okay, I'm going to resist or avoid the blows. And then uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, impress, surprise, or frighten. All right. <laughs> I think you can probably, like, dance circles around them, I would imagine, and keep them on their toes, avoiding all of their shots. Oh, yeah. She just runs off the wall, grabs someone's hand on the way, flips, sending them sprawling, and then grabs the gun hand of another one. And there's a really cool move from, I think, an X-Men movie. She grabs both hands, kicks in the chest to distance them, leaps high, knee to the chin to leap over the arm, and that ends in a very uncomfortable ballroom lock, arm lock. <laughs> That's some cutie honey shit is what that is. <laughs> that ends with the guy having his head slammed against the wall. Yeah, okay. I'm really living for Queen Bee beating the crap out of people while dancing. <laughs> yes, yes. I was gonna say, Queen Bee is just like the all the good parts of cutie honey and just like None of the bouts are like 10%, but man, it's a stylish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And I think as you're doing this, you didn't pick take something from them, but you do have an ally here. <laughs> I think as the guards try to shoot at you again, the ones that don't have a power proof barrier suddenly find that they're not holding uh, guns anymore. They are holding rubber chickens. Fantastic. Thank you, friend. <laughs> So you still have some guards that are a threat, but a few of them are disarmed now. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the middle bit. And uh, welcome back to the show. It's been a minute. Thank you all for being so understanding about me needing a bit of an editing break. I really do appreciate it. The time off did help a lot. 
especially over the Easter long weekend a couple of weeks ago. So I was feeling much, much better about getting this episode ready for everyone, and all the better for it because this episode really needed the attention. <laughs> and I really hope you're enjoying it so far, and we'll continue to enjoy it afterwards. You see how this works, there's a lot more episode left to go. As for stuff I need to actually go over here in the middle bit, uh, I think the most important thing I have to tell you all is that the new changes to our Patreon are live as of the day this episode comes out. If you missed the announcement about this, uh, you can go back to that announcement episode just before this for more details. But the long and short of it is that the Patreon is now officially dedicated to super idols and super idols only. You can now find it at patreon.com slash superidolsrpg, although I think patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise will still redirect there. Uh, and there are also new tier rewards, including a brand new After Talk show, which will start releasing alongside every new episode. Uh, it's called Idol Talk. It is essentially an in-character, inside-the-actor-studio type thing, where a rotating selection of characters from the show will chat about the events of the most recent episode as if it were an episode of a TV show that also happens to be their lives. Don't think too hard about it. <laughs> Um, it's just a very casual, very fun and cute kind of thing. Um, and if you're curious to know what it's like, we are actually releasing the first episode of it on the free feed as a sampler of what to expect. So it should already be in your podcatchers. <laughs> so once you're done with this episode, you, you can just go and listen to that too if you want. And if you enjoy it, you, you can join the Patreon for like a dollar a month and then that'll be yours every time an episode comes out. Uh, another fun thing that's exclusive to the Patreon is the current alpha draft of my upcoming game, Super Idols RPG, A New Stage. And that is exactly what it sounds like. It is an actual TTRPG based on the Super Idols concept. Yes, <laughs> the Super Idols RPG in Super Idols RPG will finally exist. It is a, it's a hack of masks based loosely on the custom moves that we use on this show, but greatly expanded and reworked. I definitely want to use some of the reworked versions of the rules that I wrote for this game in the show at some point. <laughs> um, and I'm currently starting to organize playtests for it, but if you want to try out this early build of the game with a group of your own, again, you can do that by becoming a patron. Pledge at least a dollar a month. Get a lot for a dollar a month. <laughs> and whenever I have a new build of that game ready to share, that will also go up on the Patreon, so you'll kind of get to see the game evolve over time as it gets closer and closer to Something that's fit for public release. Anyway, of course, even with all the Patreon changes, we have one thing that does not change. We still have that lovely shout-out reward for our equally lovely $5 per month patrons. So for this episode, I want to give a big shout-out to our official cheerleader squad. Adam K, Aurabolt, Blake1995, Chris T, Circus, Eric Kune, Great Big James, Jordan Cuttlefish, Liv C, Noreen, T, Rowan B, Tanner S, and Vivid Revolution. Thank you all so much as always for supporting the show. You have no idea how much it means, especially when like a bunch of stuff is changing with all this. It's, it's good to know like y'all still have our back. Anyway, thank you all again for listening to the middle bit. Uh, we have a couple of podcast ads to share with you before getting back to the episode. One is for our fellow Be Gay Roll Dice Network podcast, The Game is Afoot. And one for one of the premier masks podcasts out there in the AP sphere. You might have heard of them before. It's Moon Harbor Heroes. Thank you all once again. And I will talk to you in the next episode. Hi! Welcome to The Game is Afoot. This is a podcast where queer guests... I'm back, baby! <laughs> ...play games. I pick my jaw up off the floor real quick. <laughs> real quick. Put that back on. And do an interview. My secret is... This is published on the first and third Sunday of every month, so come join us. And I hope you have a good time. Bye! Our city is much like yours. Skyscrapers reaching towards the clouds, trains roaring on subway tracks, people bustling through their lives. But there is one major difference. I think I'm just gonna run at him. Yeah, 10, 12 tendrils of flame just burst out of my chest at the guy. I figured we already established I don't care if you're a hero. I'm not even really sure if I'm a hero. Clara punches him in the face. But I need you to be heroes in your own right. 
Moon Harbor is an epicenter of powered individuals. From villains to heroes to everything in between, these super beings strive to shape the world for better or for worse. And often caught in the crossfire are the teenagers and young adults who try to balance their heroic identities with their mundane lives. This is supposed to be fun. We will gab, we will share some secrets, but like, no pressure. Yeah, I'm totally kissing him. (laughs) (laughs) And this panel absolutely needs to be like sparks flying everywhere. Make it cheesy. These are the stories of the young heroes of our city. From flights over busy streets to the farthest reaches of space, Moon Harbor Heroes and our spin-off line, Moon Harbor Extended, are Masks, a new generation actual play podcasts that explore the intersection of responsibility to the world versus responsibility to oneself. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts or on Twitter at Moon Harborcast. We haven't looked at the people in the basement for a bit. What are you guys doing while the distractions are going off upstairs? Um, I guess now that the distractions are working, I assume we would start running for the... Yeah, going back up to the first floor. Yeah, you can probably, like, go to whatever vantage point you can get to see, like, how many guards are moving out of that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. Does someone want to roll uh, and assess the situation for that, then? Uh, Yeah. Um... Oh, you can do that. Yeah, who has a good superior right now? (laughs) I have a good superior... But I also have a move for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love okay. moves. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to roll superior. <gasps> okay. That's an eight. That works. That works. Awesome. That works. That works. So is that criminal mind that you're using? Uh, I am. So I get one from assess the situation and then one from criminal mind too. Nice. So which question would you like from the assess the situation list? Oh, okay. Perfect. 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 Yeah. How can we best end this quickly? And then from Criminal Minds, what's the best way past the guards? Okay, so yeah, you can definitely tell that some of the guards in this area look like they've started going up to other floors. There are some that are sticking around in this area because like, they know they shouldn't leave this area unguarded. Mm-hmm, so there mm-hmm. are two guards that are sticking real close to that door and one that's kind of still just in the lobby area. But there are several more that look like they've left the area at this point and to Best in this quickly would be to take out the two guards by the door, really, <laughs> and to keep eyes on the third one to make sure they don't become a problem for you. Okay. The ones by the door, is there anything hanging around that area? Ooh. Like, is there anything elevated around them? You know, there are all those palm trees in the lobby. I bet some of them have some coconuts. Oh my god. No, wait. So, <laughs> true, true story about Liv. Um, oh, I no. have two giant palm trees outside of the house that I grew up in. And <laughs> let me tell you, the fawns fall all of the time. Oh yeah. All <laughs> of the time. So, I think Lucia is going to like hold Bane Raven and Vivi back. And she's going to, like, focus on the trees, hold a hand out, and, like, pinch her middle finger and her thumb kind of, like, almost close together and twitch her wrist back to try to, like, influence the likelihood that these palm tree fawns would fall. Because they fall mm-hmm. all the Because it would just be so unfortunate if one of them just happened to fall right now, right, and bounce somewhere off of their heads like it's so annoying it's just very annoying (laughs) (laughs) yeah like it's not directly above their heads i don't think they'd be that silly to put that there but you know it could bounce against like a wall and just happen to like ricochet in just the right way Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly Mm -hmm. um so is that freak yes it would be your unleash and because we've established that your luck powers are or your regular powers i won't count this as one of your new abilities yeah this is too minor you know yeah if you really want to push your luck literally then i'd ask for it it would be so convenient if it just knocked them out you know like (laughs) just fully incapacitated the two of them yeah but that would be really unlucky for them and very lucky for me yeah but at the same time who doesn't want to mess with their new abilities right Mm. Mm mm-hmm Like, I should do it. I should do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Do it. 
Yeah. Okay. But like, um, because I have to take what is it? Do I take minus one or? Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. I think because like, okay, yeah, your yeah, luck yeah. powers were standard to begin with. I uh, hey. and this is just dropping something. Yeah. Um, in a specific way, I wouldn't call that a, an extremely pushing your luck powers. So I won't ask for the minus one on this one. Y'all, so smart. Did you know how smart I am? Not smart enough. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Ain't no way can help with that one. Well, that's a four. And your your freak was plus two, so you rolled a snake eyes. You rolled snake eyes. Oh no! Oh. Those are some oh, Tim no. rolls right there. I was literally <laughs> thinking about it, like somewhere <laughs> out in the ether. Okay. Um, Wait, hold up. Are you screenshotting it? <laughs> You're rude, <laughs> You're rude sir. <laughs> So before we play into the consequences of this, I think we'll see what's going on upstairs first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, uh, Elementum, how's stuff going up in R&D? I mean, you tell me, how many gods have like attracted to me? <laughs> yeah, I think you've got, a, you've got a small like group at this point, at least four or five, who are starting to chase you through the labs. And there are like multiple like areas of the lab that you need to dodge between different pieces of computer and, and tables and equipment and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, and I think every time I go past a computer, I'm trying to, like, throw it behind me. Like, I'm just trying to cause as much mayhem and chaos as I can um, as I'm running through these labs. Mm. Does it seem like more people are going to be coming anytime soon, or does it seem like this is a lot? You know what I'm going to say is actually it seems like you've attracted a larger group to start with, like maybe seven or eight. But as they chase you and it seems like you're all you're doing really is just leading them around and smashing things some of them start to call to each other like wait this guy might be a distraction somebody go downstairs go 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 okay once that happens i would like to use an ability i have yeah. once i see that they try to peel off yeah i would like to use reality storm okay and I want to cave in the place i want to oh. cave in the doorway so and no one can leave oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So basically, I'm going to directly engage the threat, but because I'm using Reality Storm, I get to use Freak instead of Danger. And I only have one band to spend, so it's going to be unwanted collateral damage. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, if I use the ice that is still around, would that still count as my plus one? Because technically, I didn't use my plus one for the last one. I didn't actually include that in the roll. Yeah, sure. No, go ahead. Ooh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was not great, but a nine. All right. <laughs> Oh wait, um, no nine. It didn't. It didn't include any of my modifier to it for some reason. Hmm? Oh really? Yeah, it's just a six plus three plus zero, but my modifier is a three. So this is actually a thirteen. Oh good. <laughs> All right, so that's a thirteen. So this goes exactly how you want. You you cave in the doors and stop any of the guards from leaving this floor, um, and you're you're able to use your ice to make it even more difficult to move through the area. But as you're doing this, you smash up a lot of the computers in this area. So even if you wanted to get information off of them, you sure can't now. Yeah, and in a deepest voice, I can do as Jay done, um, which is probably not very deep. He's gonna be like, "Now you're trapped here with me." <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Very fitting for, like, something that's vaguely connected to Alan Moore, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, I kind of want to let you do one more thing before I get to the next people. So, what are you doing as they're trapped in here with you? Because they're probably pulling out their power shields now, and, again, starting to, like, pull out their pistols, and they're about to start shooting you. I would like to roll for burn again, because <laughs> I have none left. Yeah, definitely do that. <laughs> oh, let's hope for the best here as well. Come on, let's go. I'm doing pretty good. Wow. Yeah. That's an eight. I think I'm going to go with Afraid. He's trying real hard to seem brave, but I think really he is very scared right now. I mean, you're a teenage boy. You have guns drawn on you. That's yeah. not great. <laughs> and I'm going to immediately use two of my burn to create an animated construct. All right. What kind of construct are you making? I think like maybe some of the water bottles I hadn't like exploded yet. I'm going to make an ice golem out of those. So it's going to like the one, a bottle like, maybe by the feet of one of them suddenly explodes and you just see the ice form and shift into an ice golem that about the size of a person, I'd say like an adult. Yeah, it does that and it blocks some of the shots before they get off to you and this ice golem is starting to fight them now. <laughs> And yeah, just gonna be they're just gonna be swinging at this thing as Jaden just tries to take cover. <laughs> he himself is not a fighter, but he can create fighters. All right. The next time I come back to you, we'll probably want to teleport out of here. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but for now, we'll go back to Queen Bee and Karen. So how's this dance fight progressing? Well, Queen Bee is a fighter, and she's having kind of a lot of fun. She's trying to take out as many guys as she can. All right. So I think that's going to be continued directly engage a threat. No, I think I only have a plus one. Oh, cool. It's so good. That's a 10. So you again get two on your directly engage a threat roll. It's going to be resist and avoid the blows, and it's going to be take something from them, which is their guns. All right. <laughs> I'm going to disarm the ones left, and uh, I don't want to go to a place that's too violent, but I have angry marked, and to clear, I would have to hurt someone or break something important. Ooh. Is, like, uh, breaking an arm acceptable? Um, I think so. I don't want to get too dark right now. Yeah, I don't want to get too dark either, but if she is trying to disarm one of them and the guard is managing to point a gun at her, I think it would make sense that she would do a complicated spin and then just hit the elbow really hard. Mm-hmm. And you can hear, like, a crack ring out through the hallway that is grisly even to you. Yeah, that, that was not the plan. You didn't, like, endanger his life, so that's <laughs> that's still something. Okay. I'm gonna remove Angry. Yeah, so I think you've managed to get their guns away from them, and I'm gonna say you've got two guns, because I'm gonna say Karen transformed the other three. I'm just gonna toss them down the corridor in the opposite direction to where I'm going. All right, cool. Uh, you can probably get out of the fray at this point because you've managed to bamboozle them so much and you've seriously hurt one of them. You've got their weapons away from them. They're probably still going to try and follow you, though. I think at this point, Karen is going to catch a look with you and nod. And you see after a second, she disappears out of the room. Okay, then Queen Bee takes a running leap and jumps out the window. All right. I think I'm going to actually have you unleash your powers for that because you're very high up the building. That's, that makes sense. Should I use the bonus in this case or is it just a straight one? I think so. This is still part of the plan. Okay. Oof. Per fortuna. All right. Okay. So that's a nine. So would you like to mark a condition for that or would you like it to be unstable or temporary? I think it's better to mark a condition. Yeah, that's fair. Because you just cleared a condition too, so you should be fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with guilty because, uh, yeah, that... That was not a nice sound. Mm-hmm. Fair. But otherwise, you're able to successfully run down the windows of this building down towards what you count to be the ninth floor. And you can probably bust in through one of the other windows down there. Yeah, she can do a flip. Yeah. Although, as you do that, um, you see hallway lights turning on. And it's not one of the hallways like you've seen in the rest of the building. It's not an office hallway. It's a hallway like in an apartment building, a fancy apartment building, but nonetheless. Um, and you can hear the sounds of people waking up in their apartments, like what's going on and stirring in their rooms, like what's going on outside. And Karen is down here and she <laughs> is like wide eyed, like, oh, no, what do we do? We need maximum chaos. Mm. So uh, I guess Orn is going to start running around, banging on doors and running. Okay, yeah, so you definitely get, like, a couple doors opening at this point. These are, like, they're not dressed in uniforms, but you would gather these are Crimson Signal employees, like, oh my god, what? oh god, ah! and, like, people start grabbing, like, baseball bats and tennis rackets, like, oh god, what do we do? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you have residents of this apartment building who are gonna start, I guess, chasing you down this hallway. <laughs> I have an idea for maximum chaos. Well, go ahead. Yeah, Cass hears... Queen Bee say that over the comms like okay I can do maximum chaos and she's gonna pull up a program labeled Echo and pull like the audio sample of the guards calling for backup earlier and run it through that and it's gonna start pumping out different calls for backup over the guards comm devices so it's like yes. we're getting swarmed on floor 12 we need backup on floor 7 fantastic <laughs> okay good good I like this okay I guess, is this an unleash for you? That'll be an unleash, and I'll spend one of my gadgets so I can roll plus superior this time. All right. It's because this is a specific acronymed <laughs> piece of software that you're using. Yeah. God uh -oh. damn. <laughs> and I got a five. It really wants you to roll oh five on God. these rolls. Oh. oh. It says oh no. no unleash for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. It goes from, like, amazing luck to, like, terrible. Hmm. 
Okay then, hmm. Well, it's about time something got complicated, I guess. <laughs> what can I do here? I mean, this could be when they realize Cass is in the system and she gets booted out. Yeah, as you do that, it causes some confusion with the guards at first, and certainly the residents of the apartment are going to stop being confused by that. But the guards quickly realize, wait, D Joe Bob doesn't sound like that. Someone's in the systems. Okay, and somebody hits a kill switch to shut the system down that was installed, like, after the last breach. Uh, as you're doing this and the guards are like, wait a minute, no, this isn't, this isn't real, we need to shut this down. You start getting a sense that like there's software in the system that is trying to cut you out and you're quickly trying to find workarounds, but it is quickly cutting your signal in and out and it's hard to stay in the fray. So Cass is frantically typing away at her keyboards. It's like, all right, they're on to me. They're cutting me out of the system. I can't, there's too many of them. I can't hold them all off. This is my last move. Good luck, everyone. And she's going to hit enter. And then Polly is going to float up in front of everyone and say, Activating. Cause problems on purpose protocol. And swirl into the cloud of pixels again. And it's going to reshape into like a humanoid silhouette, which is going to clarify to be a duplicate of Lady Luminous. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to proclaim not good enough to lead the band am I I'll show you I'll show you what I can handle and she's just gonna start shooting hard light arrows and running down the halls chasing guards away <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes yeah I think I if that, that coconut <laughs> earlier fails to like hit the guard and like they're like oh god what was that coconut ah <laughs> they do get hit by a hard light arrow <laughs> And I think at least one of them, even though they're not supposed to leave their post, if they are actively getting shot, they are going to chase the assailant. <laughs> so now you're down to one guard by the door, and this other third guard in the area is probably going to chase after her, too, as she continues to shoot more arrows. Awesome. That was really cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey there again. Quick note from Aaron in the editing bay. At this point in the recording, we had done episodes 31 and 32 back to back in a marathon session while we had Alice with us, and it was here that she had to leave us for the night finally, which is fine, we had planned for that possibility, hence why we gave Cass an out with a cool as heck final move here. So if you don't hear Cass again this episode, that'll be why. Alright, quick note over. Back to the episode. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks, yeah. Alice. It's it's so always great thank you always so a pleasure. Much. Best of luck uh, with the secret room. Yes, uh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I think as fake Lady Luminous leads a couple more of those guards in the lobby away from the area, I think y'all are good to give the signal to your people upstairs um, that they're good to come back down into the lobby. Okay. Um, you originally said there was all but one, right? Yes, there were three to start with when you first looked, mm -hmm. and Lady Luminous was able to draw away two, so you have one more left at the door. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Can this be the guard that kicked Angie out of the <laughs> Crimson Signal before? <laughs> I mean, I know it's, oh. I think we're going at night. Yeah, that same guard who was at the door and called the guards to the bathroom on her? Absolutely, it can be that person. Well, yeah, I mean, if they're increasing the night shift guard, then they'd probably have to have some of the day shift people there. Exactly. To work overtime and stuff. Because we're teenagers, we wouldn't have been, like, that late. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so how I'm picturing it is the two other guards are running away, and then there's just the one guard left, and then turns to face us, and I'll say, oh no, Vivi, let me handle this one. I'm just going to roll my usual directly engage a threat with my plus one that I already have for a thick and thin skin to move. And yeah, I'm just going to knock him out, hopefully. Oh, okay. okay, wait. If I'm there, I have this move. I haven't used it yet before, but um, it's called Troublemaker. When you help a teammate through destructive, criminal, or rule-breaking actions, I can give them a plus two <laughs> instead oh. of a plus one when I spend a team from the pool. And there is one team left in the pool. <laughs> there is one team left. So I could offer my assistance or we could save that team pool. I don't know. I don't think there has ever been a more destructive criminal or rule-breaking action on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. 
So, okay, so, uh, T, give it to me one more time. What is Angie doing? Uh, she's just going in to knock him out. Okay. Trixie, like, bends the luck around them to make the coconuts, like, roll underneath this guard's feet to just, like, make him slip up as Angie's, like, attacking him. So Angie just, like, pummels this dude to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so that makes it an eight. All right. So that takes your team down to zero for now. <laughs> for now. But it's an eight. All right. So that is a directly engaged, so you get to pick one off the list. Okay... I mean, whatever move lets me knock him out, that's really all. (laughs) Yeah, I think it would be take something from them and take their consciousness. (laughs) Yeah, their consciousness. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so you would get hit doing this, so the guard is actually going to, like, graze you with a shot from his pistol, probably just across your arm or shoulder or something like that. So you will take a condition for that, but otherwise you get to him in time and you knock his ever-loving lights out. (laughs) Okay, and then the condition I'm going to go is with insecure. All right, so you successfully have taken out all the guards in this area. Nothing stands between you and this uh, secret room except this um, very fancy door lock. Okay, how are we handling the door lock again? (laughs) Well, it was going to be Cass. (laughs) Vivi walks up to Thor and says, okay, I can try something here. and." I'm going to try to use my powers to like unlock the door or push the handle or whatever needs to happen from the other side. Sure. Yeah, like undo whatever locking mechanism may be inside there Mm -hmm. without tripping off any sensors. Yeah. I would just call that an unleash your powers. Oh my god. Uh Uh-oh. That's a four. (sighs) Hmm. So I'm going to let you open the lock. But definitely that um, that Lady Luminous is not going to be distracting those other guards for much longer, especially because um, Cass's signal just cuts out if, soon enough. So once they are no longer distracted, they're going to start rushing back in towards you. Am I able to defend Vivi? Um, I'm allowed to add my danger instead of my savior to defend her. Okay, yeah, we can do that. You probably want to get your allies down here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. So I think you can defend Vivi, and while you're defending Vivi, I think the others can teleport back down. So let's do the defend first. Oh. Yeah! 13. Yes. Very good. Okay, so for NPC threats, uh, you keep them safe and you choose one from the list. You can either add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. Um, I'm going to clear my insecure condition. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Feels good to protect a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and show off to a rival. Yes. Oh, exactly. Honestly, I think she's just gonna, like, do a cool thing where she slides on the ground and just sweeps her legs so that they just trip and fall before they can get close to her. Maybe they have their guns out and stuff, and she's just like, nope, not gonna get in mm-hmm. the line of fire of those, and then just slides them so that they can't shoot. Very cool. Okay. And in this moment, I think um, Elementum and Queen Bee and Karen, you heard just before this a message over the comms to get downstairs. Are you taking this opportunity? I don't have enough burn to fully teleport. Uh oh. <laughs> to straight up teleport, I need two and only have one. I'll have enough to slip away from the scene, but I'll still be on the same floor and I'll probably have to make the rest of the way on foot. Sure. And thankfully, you're not too far away from first floor, you're on third? Yeah. So, like, once his ice golem has, hopefully, I don't know if he, I don't actually know how well the ice golem is doing right now, but that doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to say it's doing real well. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, um, when he sees there's an opening, he's going to run and make a beeline forward for, like, the doorway that he collapsed in on itself. And then I'm going to use my move. And it basically says, I get to spend one burn to move to any place you choose within the scene, breaking through or slipping past any barriers. So I would like to slip past the barrier I created and just end up on the other side of the doorway. Alrighty, sounds good. And like he just makes a beeline towards it and he kind of dives. And before he makes contact with the collapsing doorway, he kind of evaporates into a water vapor. And the water vapor kind of slips through the cracks and whole small passages that are still left behind. And then reconstitute on the other side. And he's just going to make a beeline down for the stairs. Definitely not going to take the elevator. Going to run down to the stairs. 
Yeah, and thankfully you drew enough guards to like the upstairs area, and they're busy enough downstairs that you don't have any trouble getting down the stairs, and you're able to make it into the lobby during this awesome fight scene. And how about Queen Bee? How you doing up there? <sighs> oh, there's a lot of chaos, but I think I should run down the wall again. Mm hmm. On the outside wall? On the outside wall. Oh, okay. I get the feeling that Karen is a bit fatigued, so I'm gonna try and swoop her up. Yeah, she very much appreciates that. <laughs> um, it's definitely gonna be another Unleash Your Powers, though. I will say, as you're like leading people around the hallway and avoiding people swatting at you with baseball bats and such, you do spot something real quick in the hallway. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to think about it right now, but you might have time to think about it later. Um, you know how apartments are numbered, like the floor number and then like a letter or something like that. So it's like 9A, 9B, 9C, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. When you pass by 9P, you notice that the P looks a little bit different than the other letters in the hallway. And as you burst out the window, you realize it looks like the stylized P logo that Papaya uses. Oh. She didn't come out into this hallway. She's not here. But that looks like it might be her apartment. Hmm. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So you're going to roll Unleash to see how well this goes. Okay. That's a nine, so... So would you like another condition, or would you like it to be unstable or temporary? I don't want to risk hurting Karen. I'm going to go with unstable and temporary, and I'm going to pick uh, the insecure. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's it's real scary running down this far on the side of the building, because it's like nine floors worth of walls and windows with nothing below you. And Karen looks scared, too, and like grips you tighter as you run down the wall. But you are able to make it down to first floor. You probably just smash through the window again, honestly, is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Okay, okay. You good? Yeah, no, thanks. I'm... Oh, I, uh, I, I... My head's not in a great spot right now, but um, hopefully we get a breather soon. Yeah. <sighs> but thank you. Uh, didn't expect the golf clubs. <sighs> yep, <Yeah>, no. <sighs> that was interesting, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go see if we can help the others. I think I can hear some chaos going on in here, too. All right, so I'm going to say about this time, Elementum and Queen Bee both enter the lobby at about the same time as Angie is defending Vivi from the guards. Vivi has her hands against the door and it's like groping around in the dark for a light switch or a door handle, except you don't know what the door is shaped like. And also your hand is not attached to your body, so it's taking a while. Yeah, so definitely, I think while this chaos is going on, you do manage to get that lock open. The guards are starting to try and get back to their feet, though, so they are going to need to be dealt with one final time before you can get past this door and maybe close the door behind you on them. Now I kind of want to unleash my powers. Yeah! Go for it! <laughs> yes! I wanted to give you one more opportunity for it. Okay, um... Uh, she didn't want to do it with the guard because she really just wanted to punch him, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is why I took my plus one for my thick and thin skinned, because it's ongoing to unleash my powers. I was using it wrong. Oh, okay. So sorry about that, but thankfully it wasn't in a way that counted in my last couple rolls. Anyway, um... Okay, good. So this is an unleash your powers, and what kind of unleash are you going for right now? I am going to try to turn into a tiger and maybe pounce them, but I don't want to explicitly hurt them. I just want to make sure they stay down. Okay, since that is one of your new abilities and the way we've determined that we're going to handle these is you can either take a minus one on that in addition to whatever other stat modifiers you have, or you can take a voluntary side effect and roll Unleash as normal. What would you prefer? Um, I think I'm just going to take the minus one. Sure. But the thing is, I want the involuntary side effect to just, let's see what happens. <laughs> and then I'll make a suggestion. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What oh my god. is it god. about this building that makes us so bad at the things <laughs> so that we do? I mean, talk for your speak for yourself. I've been doing great. Yeah. Jada's anyway. been doing amazing. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's a force. I'm just going to mark potential. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Is that a... No, it's not a level up. Um, <laughs> okay, well, I can certainly tell you one thing that happens. You don't turn into a tiger. Um, <laughs> what do you turn into? I think you know. I do. So she goes in and she actually goes in to try and do the pounce. And some shimmering happens and it looks like she's changing. But then there's just like this poof of like fireworks and then instead the guards are getting up and then there's just this little pink tiger kitten that kind of just hops on the one guard's chest <laughs> completely unthreatening oh no Vivi turns around and says like okay I think I've got it <gasps> gasps because it's so cute yeah it's so cute <laughs> and I think the guards do stop for a second that because it is you are so cute I even try like a little roar, but it's just a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the one you landed on is just going to pick you up by the scruff of your neck there. <laughs> um, definitely going to hiss. Um, oh. oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Who's helping? <laughs> yeah, I want to see if I can help. Um, can I roll for Ben again? Yes. Uh, I know my luck's going to eventually run out, but let's just see. Help me. Holy, oh, okay, oh. thank you. Wow, um, I rolled so a 10. you're just selfish and taking all the good rolls. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's you know, crazy. honestly, if it is, he deserves them at this point. That's true. <laughs> that's he fair. He usually has the bad luck out of all of us. Um, I really do. I'm literally one away from leveling up, and I, I thought for sure I was going to get it today, but apparently not. <laughs> oh, well, it's so terrible. And, <laughs> I know, it's awful, right? <laughs> The one thing I want to do first is I would like to use Snatch. Spend one burn to use your powers to seize one object up to the size of a person from someone within view. And I would like to Snatch yeah. Tiny Cat Andy from this guard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think this is a very weird feeling for Andy now to think about because I don't think she's experienced this before. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of like pins and needles from your tail all the way up to your head. And to everyone else, it looks like a piece of paper burning from the bottom end up to the top as you disappear. And then that's but in reverse as you reappear in my arms i was kind of like creating me Aww. like a little kitten in my arms <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and then uh how many guards are there right now there's two active ones here now two and now i think about it, where am i in position compared to them and the rest of the group are we like all together or i think you're near the group you're not right next to them because you came from a stairwell you're not right yeah. near the door okay but you are nearish to the group okay um in that case I would like to spend my another burn to use moat. Spend one burn to create a barrier that will hold back threats as long as you keep your attention on it. The GM may call for you to spend another burn if the barrier is threatened by particularly powerful enemies. Okay. I think what I want to do is, um, earlier today when we first knock in, I practiced keeping the air still. I would like to basically solidify the air into like a box Ooh. around them to just keep them in mm -hmm. place. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know hitting them directly with my powers won't work because they probably have the shield. So I'm just going to restrain them for now. Yeah, go right ahead and do that. And uh, I, you don't need to spend the extra burn. They're just grunt guards. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, and that just happens. I don't need to roll anything. Yeah. So you create basically like a cube-shaped tornado around them, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, very much. That's great. So Queen Bee and Karen are able to very safely like run around them and get regrouped with everybody else. <laughs> And he's just kind of like slowly walking towards the rest of the group as well, but like keeping his eye on it because he has to concentrate and keep his attention on it to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think they are trapped inside. They can't move from outside of there. Um, I think, oh, will their bullets go through? I don't think so. so. I think they are just trapped for now, but you do have to keep your concentration on it until you're through the door. Yeah. So I'm just going to be walking back with like, hey, um, this is hard. Are we Are we good? I, I think we're we're good. Let's go. Yeah, where's where's Polly? Oh, um, well, Polly turned into Lady Luminous for a second, I think, and like ran through here and then just disappeared. Oh, yeah, she said something about being cut out. Okay, um, at least she's back at my place. They gave us enough time to get the door open. Well, good. Let's go then. I like squirm right. out of Jaden's arms just so that I can sit on his shoulder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, you um, see Lucia look kind of worried, but then like shake herself out of it and go. I think she was a little worried about Cass. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I think you you all, yeah, you finally run through that dang door and you get it shut and locked behind you. So it's going to take a bit for anyone to follow you in there. And I think like the moment he loses eye contact with the barrier, it probably goes down because he has to have his attention on it for it to stay up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so the guards will definitely be trying to get to the door, but because the lock is otherwise very good, it's going to take them a while to actually get that open. So until then, you should be good to run down this long hallway that's behind the door. It is, of course, lit very dramatically in those like red overhead lights that you see in movies and whatnot that are very impractical, but look very cool. <laughs> Perfect. And it is a very long hallway. It's, it's, it's Far too long to be practical, <laughs> and there is nothing in the hallway except for another door at the very end of the hall, which you would have seen on the plans for the building, so you expected this. Um, uh, you can't see through the door, like there's no window on it, but there is another lock here that you'll have to deal with. Um, I I can try doing the same thing again, but it it might it might take a while. I don't know if anyone else has a better way to get through this door. I could. Give it a shot. I think I've got at least enough energy left to pop this lock out of existence, I think. Um, if that doesn't work, I could try short-circuiting it. Um, is this electric lock? Mm -hmm. I, I probably should ask about that. Yeah, it looks like it's a, an even more, like, slightly, like, upgraded version of the lock outside. Like, it's got a few different, like, methods by which you're supposed to open it. Um, it's supposed to have both, like, a retinal scanner and voice print identifier on it. Hmm. I could try short-circuiting it, but I don't know if that will guarantee it opens or just makes it even harder to unlock. I could give it a try if, if somebody doesn't mind propping me up for a bit after this. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Okay. And she nods in the direction of where you would assume the friend is next to her, and she takes a breath and then closes her eyes as she and the friend concentrate on undoing the threads of reality in such a way that the lock dematerializes without any of the connecting wires setting off some kind of alarm or other failsafe that would trigger from this point. And by the time that's done, the lock is gone. There's like a hole in the wall. Um, the door is ready to open, swing open from there. And Karen again looks winded and wobbles a bit as she leans on Jaden for support. And it's like, okay. 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 We're, we're good. How you feeling? Not great, but I think it'll pass soon. Um, usually it does. Okay. Okay. Is everyone ready? Yes. Angie mouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vivi summons her sword and nods. And as you enter this room, the behind this door that you've been trying to access this entire time, you see absolutely nothing. It is just one very large, circular, empty white room. And apart from this, there's only one feature of note inside it. A very low, flat, circular pedestal in the center of the room. Um, hold on. This can't be it, right? It's gotta be something. We felt so much magical energy around here before. Um, let me give a this a try again. Um, I have one more burn and I'd like to spend it to use elemental awareness. All right. <laughs> nice. I have to mark a condition, but I don't know what to mark, so I might mark it depending on what I learn. But my question is... Okay. Because I, I don't know if it might be something terrifying or make me go too angry, but um, what is this room? <laughs> is my <laughs> question. This room is the gateway to somewhere else. You just need to find the entrance. Okay, um, does this have the same energy and vibe as the, as the mist and water vapor that I sensed last time? Yes, absolutely. It is the exact same, in fact, as you sense the, the magic in this area. Okay. Again, his eyes kind of flicker between the different colors depending on um, of his elements, and there's a crackle of electricity from his eyes, and his eyes just kind of widen as he's looking around and just says, This... Uh, this is a gateway and entrance to somewhere else. Um, and I think this is where they went. Is it the same energy as the water vapor and mist? Can I try to use the, like, kind of like when I was trying to perceive Karen's friend, can I try to like 
see if I can see beyond the illusion, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think what you might be seeing is you'll catch glimpses of the friend moving around the room as they're helping to search mm -hmm. for whatever might be in this room as well and using their energies to help you. I honestly think like Lucia like totters off after the friend and it's just like, okay, what do you see with your... Yeah, and I'm going to give you a plus one on this roll to help you with that. Cool. God knows I need it. Yeah, so that's going to be an unleash. It's a 10! Hell yes! Yes! Nice. yes. Perfect! Let's go! <laughs> As you're following the friend around, and since you're in the mindset of perceiving the friend anyway, and you have to be in a weird headspace to do that... What do I see with my tricky eyes? <laughs> <laughs> you are starting to perceive what seems like the edges of like a tall, narrow cloud almost in the center, floating above the pedestal. Like, again, it's hard to perceive, but it is there, and you feel like if you could bring it more into everyone's field of vision or like this plane of existence more, then you could properly access it. I at least point it out to everybody, because that's going to be a helpful start. If I can, like, if I maybe I can't tell them what to see, but I'm going to point them where they should look or whatever teachers say. Yeah, well, you can tell them you see a cloud. That's easy enough yeah, to that, say. Yeah, that too. I'm just like, okay, um, there's just this big old cloud right over here, so I think that's a place to start. Um, Wait, right in the center? Yeah, and Elementum, as you hear her say cloud and you know what to look for, you start to see it faintly more as well. Especially since you're still feeling out with your powers. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Mark my doom track to use infinite powers again and gain the use of supernatural senses once. Okay. And also try to see what this is. And I think that, you know, in, in response to, does any, can anyone else sense things with their powers? Vivi says, no, I just, well, well, I don't know, maybe. And then I'm going to roll to unleash, which has worked great for me so far. All right. That's a seven. Just good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what um, I would ask to as, be as a downside for that. I guess it would be just, like, unstable or temporary. Like, th the it's flickering in your vision. Mm -hmm. That's the unstable part of it, but you do see it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I can see it, too. And I think as more of you start to perceive this thing properly, it, it basically, like, your, your magical energies are attuning to it more you start to feel like a warmth within you, not dissimilar to the warmth you felt when you were dancing with Conduit in the dream world. And as you feel more of this warmth around you, you realize like you feel it connecting you to the other people in the room. And I think you're starting to get the sense that if you work together with the power of friendship, <laughs> there it is. then you can use your shared power to fully manifest this thing. Um. When Lucia says it's a cloud, clouds are just water vapor. So I'm going to try and grab a hold of it. And I think the best I can do as far as visibility goes is maybe get the water vapor to move a bit faster. So it looks like, you know how it kind of when it's a hot day and you look out in the distance, you kind of see the heat waves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the best I could do to make it more visible to everyone. So I'm probably going to like basically grab an each individual molecule and try to vibrate them as fast as I can <laughs> and to make them at least <laughs> somewhat visible to people. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think Vivi's going to try to help with that just by trying to grab onto it with her telekinesis and not, doesn't really have an idea of trying to move it, but just to make it visible by making it glow purple. All right. And basically how this is going to work is I'm going to just ask each of you what you're doing to help to manifest this thing. And I'm not even, it's not going to be a role. As long as everybody contributes one thing, it's going to work. I've got Bane Kitten on my head. Um... Yeah, yeah even Bane Kitten can contribute. I'm going real power friendship shit. It can be like as intangible as you want. Um, Bane Kitten, I'm I'm not going to lie. I almost want to change the stage name now. Um, <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think Angie's feeling a little bit insecure in trying anything with her powers, but I think she's going to try and hint to... Elementum to take her to where that circular disc is, I guess. Mm -hmm. And if there's a button she can hit with her paws or something while <laughs> everybody else is manifesting, <laughs> I think she would do that if possible. 
Sure. You do like a ratatouille and you kind of lead me by pulling on my hair. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think Jaden takes you over to the, to the pedestal in the middle of the room and sets you down in the middle. Yeah. You don't find a button there, but I think you being in the center there to mark the spot makes it a little easier to focus on the spot for everybody else. Okay, sure. Because <laughs> you're right there underneath it. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Uh, how about Queen Bee? Well, uh, she can't exactly perceive where things are, but she pulls out of her pocket uh, two Altoid tins, and she unleashes a handful of bees who start glowing with energy and swarming around the area where Jaden and Vivi are trying to compact the vapor, trying to isolate it. Yeah, and I think in combination with the water vapor from Jaden making the fog more visible, and Vivi's telekinesis making the border more tangible, Angie marking the spot where the location is, B providing more magical energies from the disco bees, and also I think the friend and Karen are contributing their weird cosmic energies. And all of this together contributes to you being able to properly perceive this tall, narrow strip of cloud that eventually seems to solidify more in front of you as an actual, like, door of cloud. And you can't see through it, but you do get the sense now that now that it is more solidly manifested that it will take you somewhere if you pass through it. So this is definitely a doorway. Yeah, no, duh. Okay, I'm just saying, are we... Do we want to go through it? We've come this far. I wonder if Drew's up there. He might be. If all of the missing people are anywhere, I feel like it's going to be through there. Okay, just one sec, hold on. I've read enough and seen enough movies to know that we should probably test if it's even safe to go through it. Right, we gotta poltergeist this shit. Hold on, I got an idea. And he's gonna run through his backpack and pull out a skipping rope. And he's gonna <laughs> just throw one end of the skipping rope inside. That is on your inventory. I have yep. it in front of me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and he's gonna wait like a couple of seconds and then pull it out again to see if anything happened to the skipping rope. Uh, no, you throw it through, you wait for a second and pull it back and it's still a skipping rope. Nothing happened to it. Maybe it's slightly damp, it's foggy. <laughs> okay, so you're just a bit moist, um, but other than that, it's pretty good. Okay, let's go. Together. Yes. Ew! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> On three. One. Two. Three. And you all pass through the doorway. so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at AuthorX. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen Bee 1516087 Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at LiveInADay. And special guest character Cassandra Cass Tora was played by Alice Lily Kira, who can be found on Twitter at MagicalGirlKira. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at PeachGardenGames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Erin Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is under license from Jumendo Music. 
Our ending theme is Lax by Humans Win and is under license from Storyblocks.com. Elementum's R&D fight music is Wing It, a Creative Commons track by John Bartman. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Oh no, I was just thinking of your mom too, and she made you that nice custom jacket that says Bane Raven on the back. <laughs> oh my god. Pink, pink patch on it with kitten. Yeah. Or maybe Karen can help you to like warp the threads to say the right word. Maybe. <laughs> Not Karen using our cosmic powers to edit a typo. <laughs> 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 Man, if I had cosmic powers, I would edit my tweets all the time. Imagine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if Twitter can't do it, at least it's Eldritch God can. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I, I did confirm at least to you that she's not the god of this world. <laughs> no, yeah. Sure. Yeah, not no, you're yet. right. Her friend is, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Listen, I think I think if we've if we've learned one thing about Karen, it's that she would gladly use her powers for idol branding. Oh, absolutely. She yeah. made a light stick in front of us. So I think she'd be <laughs> Wait, like, yeah, hold sure. On. Was the light stick that she got us from the beginning always a concho? Like, did she always, has she just always just made that? Or did she actually own those? Hmm. Light sticks are expensive, man. That, yeah. Okay. That also, the, the bag of popcorn when she just. Yeah. Yep. That's why she got, summoned the bag of popcorn and we were slingshot. talking this about back to episode one. Yeah, when we were yeah, talking oh, about our damn. group colors, and she just happened two, to have a yeah light stick in every like color. Every comedic <laughs> gimmick has just been her world bending reality. <laughs> I, yeah. oh, God, that powers. was my day one uh, long play. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> oh I, my God. I have I have and so that's much why she respect. Wore pants. That's plausible deniability. Mm-hmm. I have, exactly. I have so much respect for Aaron for setting that up so early and for Karen <laughs> having reality bending powers and, and just using it to, to set up uh, the visual gags at every opportunity. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I love that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but yes, I'm very glad I got some of that out. There's still more Karen lore to drop, um, but He's I didn't want to drop it all at once because that would have dragged the whole session down. Yeah. She's dead, Aaron. Yeah, there's a, there's a <laughs> yeah. casual Karen. I didn't say she was dead. I said she was, I mean, she was legally, legally, dead. legally dead. There's a very important distinction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's just, she's just doing the vampire thing. Exactly. Still not she's like the wolf casual. She has to move around every few years so people don't catch on. Karen yeah. is a empty <laughs> casket, six feet under. <laughs> <type> <laughs> Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.